Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the September 2019 CTSS Quiz. It's hard to believe it's September. That means July and August, and the summer is over. So welcome to the fall. Okay, I have 10 terrific cases for you to look at. And without any further ado, let's get started. Now, in this case, patient has right upper quadrant pain and is hypotensive. What's the best diagnosis? If you look, you see a large mass involving the right lobe of the liver and what appears to be a cirrhotic liver. The mass has areas of neovascularity and there is extension beyond the surface of the liver. There appears to be blood. And so what I'm looking at is a hepatic mass that has basically ruptured. Now, lymphoma, I once saw a case of lymphoma that bled, but this is not lymphoma and this is not hepatic AVM. You can argue, is this hepatic adenoma or is it hepatoma? Both of them can rupture and spontaneously bleed, but with the underlying cirrhosis and the real impressive neovascularity in the liver lesion, this is going to be a hepatoma, and this indeed was hepatoma. Hepatomas can spontaneously bleed, and they can rupture through the liver. And the patient was very lucky that it was eventually embolized. You can see in this case neovascularity, also extending into the portal vein. This patient had a very, very extensive tumor. This is a middle-aged female, and this was an incidental finding, and what's the best diagnosis? Or first, what's the least likely diagnosis? Well, you see a vascular lesion, and it's vascular throughout. Could this be a hepatoma? The answer is possible that the patient doesn't have a cirrhotic liver. FNH, FNH, the density is fine, though FNH is usually more homogeneous, often with a central scar. Hepatic adenoma is a good thought, vascular lesions which have variable enhancement, uh, that is indeed a possibility, but the truth is all three of them are indeed possible. This is not a hemangioma. Hemangiomas have peripheral enhancement with peripheral to central fill-in. So the one thing this is not is hemangioma, and oh yes, by the way, this ended up being an hepatic adenoma. This patient had abdominal pain and we diagnosed colitis. And I'm asking you what's the main cause or the most likely cause of colitis. You can see very impressive thickening of the transverse colon and the patient's splenic flexure. So we think about it, pseudomembrous colitis typically is not focal, though it can be. I've seen it isolated in the rectum and occasionally in the right colon, but not in this location. This really doesn't look like Crohn's disease. It's almost too thick and it's almost like thumbprinting. It's not diverticulitis. Based on location, based on the prominent thickening, based on the appearance, this is a schema colitis. And indeed, this patient had a schema colitis. This patient had surgery with resection. Just a very, very impressive example. This patient had left chest pain and swelling and What's the best diagnosis? You can see the left breast is really swollen. There's edema in the subcutaneous tissues. There's nodularity. And the more you look, you see there's masses as well. The patient also has a left pleural effusion. The infiltration is particularly nicely seen in the cinematic rendering. Now, breast abscesses and chest wall abscesses can occur. But to be frank, this looks more mass-like. There are inflammatory components present but there's a solid mass about four centimeters in the left side of the breast. Lymphoma rarely infiltrates the breast, and then you'd also see extensive adenopathy. This was an infiltrating breast cancer. The breast is enlarged, it's fixed, there's infiltration in the subcutaneous tissues, infiltration in the skin, and involvement of the chest wall. Breast cancer was the diagnosis, just a very, very impressive example. The most likely diagnosis in this case, this is kind of easy in a classic case. There's a mass in the root of the mesentery which has calcification. There's desmoplastic reaction. You can see involvement of the SMV with multiple collaterals present, also involvement of the SMA. There's the uh, desmoplastic reaction. Again, sclerosing mesenteritis can give mesenteric masses, but not this appearance and not the venous involvement. This is really carcinoid tumor. Classic carcinoid tumor from the mass, 70% of calcifications, and then the desmoplastic reaction. Just a very, very pretty example. The best diagnosis in this case. There's a vascular lesion in the liver, which has peripheral enhancement, 
and their perfusion changes. And then in the venous phase, the lesion fills in. And that's going to be a hemangioma. Now, what I wanted to show this case for was you see in the early phase there's very nice perfusion changes around the liver, around the liver mass. And remember I speak about how perfusion changes can be seen in METS, but perfusion changes can also be seen in other lesions, including hemangiomas. And in this case, I definitely would have considered a carcinoid. I could have considered hepatoma in a cirrhotic liver. I could have considered a neuroendocrine tumor. Those are all possibilities. But the peripheral enhancement with the central filling in, this was hemangioma. Again, you got to think about it, and you, you might worry, could this be something else by the perfusion change? But I showed this to help you recognize that perfusion changes can also be seen in hemangiomas. Now, in this case, patient had chest pain. What's the most likely diagnosis? Large paratracheal and metastinal nodes, middle metastinum, anterior metastinum, paratracheal region. This is a classic case of B-cell lymphoma, large bulky nodes. The nodes have some vascularity. This is not the appearance of thymoma. Theoretically, it could be metastatic disease. Renal cell is one of the common mets to give metastinal nodes. Sarcoid, perihylar, subcarinal. This is too bulky. This is a great example of lymphoma. In this case, I asked for the least likely diagnosis. What you see here, at first glance, you might say, and it's hard with just a couple images, could this be a gastric mass? If this was a gastric mass, you might think about a gist tumor. But this is mass of the left lobe of the liver. It's cystic, and there are solid components. The solid components make it not a complex liver cyst, and surely not a simple cyst. But a simple cyst would be the least likely diagnosis. This, in fact, was a cystic cholangiocarcinoma, cystic lesions, atrophy of the left lobe, replacement of the left lobe, and solid masses. It could be a biliary cystadenoma or cystadenocarcinoma. Those are often cystic septations and nodularity, so that would not be a bad thought. But the thing this is surely not is a simple cyst. Again, what's the best diagnosis in this case, and what's the least likely diagnosis? So I'm asking you for the least likely diagnosis. The first image on your left, you see diffuse thickening of the esophagus, and it could be bad esophagitis if you're immunosuppressed, though more likely it's esophageal cancer, there's collapsed left lower lung, and then you go a bit higher at the bifurcation. You can see this tumor infiltrating the middle mediastinum with encasement of the left maintenance stem bronchus. In fact, this could be a small cell lung cancer growing posteriorly to involve the esophagus. It could be METS to the mediastinum, though METS involving the esophagus is rare. And in fact, this was esophageal cancer which spread and involved the left main stem bronchus and infiltrated the mediastinum. That's the likely diagnosis, and that's what it was. This is not simply just esophagitis. Bad esophagitis, you can see free air, you can see some nodes but you don't see the infiltration around the airway, and you don't see the extent of tumor as we see in this example. Just a very nice case. But this was an incidental finding, and you see a cystic mass on the left cardiac border, oval, well-defined, abuts the heart. Could it be a bronchogenic cyst? In theory, yes, but bronchogenic cyst, not a great location, usually subcarinal or paratracheal in location. Could this be a cystic lymphoma? Lymphoma can be cystic, but usually after chemotherapy, and this just doesn't have that appearance. It was an incidental finding, and it's not a great location for being the only component of cystic lymphoma. Could it be an abscess? Well, it's water density, no air bubbles, no inflammation, so that would be unlikely. The best diagnosis and what this was was a pericardial cyst. Usually pericardial cysts are anterior at the cardiophrenic angle on the right, but they can occur on the left, they can occur in this location, and this was a pericardial cyst. Well, those are 10 cases. We gave you some abdomen, we gave you some chest, we gave you some, some of everything. I hope you enjoyed the cases. I hope you're having a great fall season. And with that, as the song goes, we'll see you in October. Actually, the song went see you in September, but nevertheless, I'm seeing you already, and we'll see you next month. Have a great day.
If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website ctss.com for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.